Hi, I'm John M. Ketchum. I'm the author of The Zero's Journey, a modern-day survival guide to weathering <laughs> accidental enlightenment. And you're listening to The Living Sugar-Free Lifestyle Show with Andrea in the morning. Good morning, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and thank you so much for joining me for another episode of the Living Sugar-Free Lifestyle Show, Andrea in the Morning. It's been a while, and we are on Season 7. Golly, so much has happened in the past couple of months. It feels like it's been six months, but it really hasn't. Um, Hopefully you've caught up, you've had some time to catch up on all the previous episodes, because now we're going to be bringing you something new. And this series is going to be all about leveling up. It is the level up season, uh, season or season seven, series six, if you will. Um, And we're going to be focusing on the DIY head extraction. We have a couple of panel discussions and interviews to share with you. I'm going to be sharing some clips um, from a various different people, diversities and backgrounds. And so hopefully you'll get something out of it. If you have questions, be sure to send them in. If you haven't read the Living Sugar Free Revealed Aspie Secrets book, be sure to go ahead and get that. And um, if you have any questions for our guests, you can either send them in on Anchor, you can do a recording, do a voice recording, or you can just send it to us, shoot it to us in a DM DM or comments um, on any of our social media, whatever your preferred social media platform is. So um, that's what we're going to be talking about. Uh, We've got some great guests, uh, Vita Bricks, um, Lily Aurora. Uh, We're going to be having uh, Lee Grissom on. We'll be speaking with um, Joshua Lee Ronan. If you have not yet heard my interview, uh, two interviews actually, on Ronan Uncensored, those are really awesome. And we talked a lot about um, everything that's going on with the protests, race relations in general. And so if you want to know my thoughts around that, definitely go check out those two interviews. Um, But we're going to be focusing on leveling up in spite of and because of everything that's going on. So we're going to take a break right here and we'll be back and we'll get more into it. Hi, this is Lee Grissom, the author of KLS 9 and Saber 6, and you're listening to the Living Sugar-Free Lifestyle Show with Andrea in the Morning. Welcome back, and thank you again for joining me for another episode of the Living Sugar-Free Lifestyle Show. This is your host, Andrea Raquel, and I haven't spoken with you guys in a while. Now, if you are following and connected everywhere, then I have. But if you only maybe just met me via this podcast, go ahead and connect with me around the net via YouTube and Facebook, TikTok if you're there, Twitter, etc. And you'll be sure not to miss a thing. Now, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Um, You know, I've been recording podcast, uh, just sort of a slightly pre-record thing. We really can't do the lives here like that. But there is a way that you can tune in live if you prefer that, as well as video. Um, We are going to be live streaming on uh, Facebook and TikTok and Twitter Periscope and wherever else we can be, (laughs) most places. Um, If not, you'll at least be able to find a link to where it is, and it'll probably be somewhere that you already use. Um, And then we'll be sharing some of those clips and recorded episodes as well. We'll be sharing those here via the podcast. Um, And of course, you can continue to listen across Spotify and iTunes and Google Play if that's your preference to like, you know, like maybe you're listening in the car, you can't really watch. Um, So, you know, I like to meet you where you are. And sometimes maybe you want to watch, maybe you want to listen, you have those options. Um, And, you know, speaking of listening, I am, I promise I'm going to get my ebook out very, very soon. Um, A lot of people have expressed interest in that, and I know it's not always conducive to um, sit and read a book, Um, (laughs) so I am going to definitely get that um, audio book out as soon as possible. I don't have a date for you yet, but I'm working on it, so I will announce that um, coming up very soon. Um, Let's see, we're only halfway through the year. Can I say before the end of the year? That's my goal, Um, but I can't promise just yet. Um, so let's see, what else do I have to share with you that's new? 
Um, um, just, you know, recapping a little bit, I talk about a lot of different stuff and I try to leave good breadcrumbs, but sometimes I forget. So if I shared something and you wanted to know more about it or where to find it and you couldn't find it, just know that you can go to sugarfreecoaching.com. You can click on refers and everything that I'm an affiliate of that I talk about um, a lot like, I always share, you know, good products and just great information, even if I'm not an affiliate or ambassador. But specifically things that I'm an ambassador for that I shared, like a specific discount code or a discount link to, you can go to sugarfreecoaching.com and click on the refers tab and you can get all that stuff there, as well as my top um, items and um, best reads, favorite reads on Amazon. That link is over there as well. So, um and then, you know, if you're on Instagram, um, on the Living Sugar Pre on the Living Sugar Free page, there's a link tree link that's they're all listed there as well. Um, so you know, there's a lot of really cool stuff that I share that people ask me about, you know, jewelry and um apparel items and my tools of the trade, things that I used. Um and, and if it's really good and I really like it and there is an affiliate program, I try to join it because I know I'm gonna be talking about it a lot. Um as well as, you know, all my wellness products that I talk about. I'm, I'm, I try not to be spammy and I try not to be salesy. So I don't beat you over the head with all the stuff that I can make money off of. But a lot of people are like, how can we support? Well, you can buy my stuff. Buy all the stuff that I'm an affiliate of or just the stuff you like, of course. But also, too, you know, if it's like products that are like... um natural products, definitely buy those because a lot of the over-counter stuff is very, very bad for you. I'm not going to get into that today, but we did a whole wellness episode, a wellness series. You can go back and listen to that and hear all of my pet peeves and gripes about, you know, over-the-counter products and what some healthy alternatives are. But, you know, when you see me talking about hair and skin and all that kind of stuff, I might kind of just share it in passing. Just know you can get all that stuff right from that, um, that page on my website, sugarfreecoaching.com. So, you know, you might not, might not always be able to find your way back to something or remember what episode it was. Just remember, sugarfreecoaching.com, everything I talk about, an easy link to get to my books, um, previous p podcasts, blogs, um, where I am on social media, et cetera, et cetera. You can always just start with sugarfreecoaching.com. That's the easiest way. Shoot me a message, ask me about services, speaking, et cetera. Okay, so that's just a little bit of housekeeping information and, you know, just trying to make sure that I make it as easy as possible for you. I realized, you know, I've been um, doing social media for quite a while and I realized that so often when you do drill down, dig in and really try to get to know a person, um, a lot of times we make it hard. You know, we do all this social media and spend all our time on social media and then don't even remember to share the links for our followers to go visit our website, which is ultimately what the point is. I mean, I know some social media is fun. TikTok is a lot of fun. But, you know, social is social and media is media. And if you're doing social media, great if you have fun. But I submit that everyone start thinking a little bit about how it can benefit their brand, even if you are having fun, because you cannot hide on social media. You can't, period. I don't care what they said. I don't care what the privacy rules are. I don't care if your, web, your page is private. You cannot hide on social media, and that information is forever. So you may as well, like, take advantage of it and do it the right way. I mean, it's, it's just like in real life. I mean, you wouldn't go to a party where you couldn't guarantee that everybody at that party wasn't going to tell all your business or take a picture of you and have you on the internet or on television and do something that you wouldn't want the rest of the world, your boss, your children, your parents, and whoever else included, to know that you did. And some people would, but I'm suggesting that you not. You know, the camera is always on. The mic is always live. So just know that if you have a picture of me or a video of me or something from back in the day or something I wrote or whatever, a message I sent you or whatever, like you won't be blackmailing me. Because if I said it and I put it in writing or I did it in public, I don't care. You know, I might not get on the Internet and tell all my business. I might not even do a lot of video or 
do videos in private situations. And private is relative to everybody, but I don't always go to parties and dinner parties and events or on a date or outing or whatever. And I don't always put it on social media or share it because it's not everybody's business. It's my time and it's my fun. Social media is not fun to me. I don't do it for fun. I have a good time and I love what I do and I play at my work, but I'm not doing it for the sake of fun. Um, And that brings me to another point I want to talk about here in a minute, too. But let's stay on this one for now. So even if you're just on social media hanging out, even if you're just having a good time, I submit that you consider your brand, your personal brand. Um, Consider what it is that you're planning to do that you want to do, even if you're not doing it yet. And consider how you can capitalize on it or and or at least not sabotage it or hinder it. And I don't mean according to other people's opinions. You have to live and be you and be your authentic self and do it full out. So you can't like build your brand and decide, you know, define and design your personal brand by doing it based on what other people say you should do. And that can range the gamut. You know, you might be... um, you might be concerned about some type of systemic bias that has to do with, you know, skin color or if your hair looks good enough. You might be concerned about some type of, um, you know, bias against you because of your sexuality. You might be concerned about, um, you know, your background not being nice enough. You might be concerned, you know, about whatever your habits are or, you know, if you're eating. People are getting, um, you know, what do they call it? Um shamed or whatever for for their food choices. So anyway, it this can go across a lot of different things, you know, not having your lighting perfect or whatever. But ultimately, like you have to define what's good enough and what's perfection for you and what's just trying to keep up with the Joneses or trying to fit in or letting um, the quote unquote influencers and experts define what's good enough to the point where it hinders you from doing it, what it is that you want to do and what you feel like you're supposed to do. That's a long roundabout way to say it, you guys, but I've seen it across so many different examples and scenarios. I want to make sure that I'm clear for everybody. I don't want to be specific because I've just seen it happen in too too many different ways and recently had conversations with people, you know, where they had concerns and I lived it my own self, you know, so we can't, you know, whatever it is that we feel like we're supposed to be doing, Uh, or whatever it is that we want to be doing. It's all the reasons in the back of our mind why we're not qualified or why we shouldn't do it. If we drill down on all those reasons, it's probably like outside influences. You know what I mean? The voices of others replaying in our head. And we got to get that off of us. We got to get rid of that or else we're never going to do what we want to do. It's never going to be the right time. You're never going to have all the perfect equipment. You know, you you can't change your skin color. Um, it, you can't change your hair if you got hair like I do. <laughs> um, I mean, you can style it, but you can't change your hair texture. You can't, I mean, you're working with what you got. So work with what you got, whatever it is. And the best way for other people to take you seriously and whatever it is you're trying to do is for you to tell them that it's serious, for you to define it and say, I meant to do that. You know, people will be less likely to try to make fun of you and laugh at you if you come right out and say, this is what I'm doing. But if you're just kind of hanging out and you're laughing at your own self, then they're more likely to laugh at you. And people are slick with it. I mean, your friends, associates, followers, etc., people who act like they love your dirty draws are real slick mouthed in their comments. How do I know? Because I see them. People don't so much do it to me, y'all, because I'll crack their face and not on purpose, not because when people say something, I immediately get offended because I don't. A lot of times stuff goes over my head when people are even trying to be offended. But what happens is if you ask me a question, I'm going to answer it. And if you were being sarcastic or slick mouthed, then my answer sounds like I'm cracking on you, but I'm really not. I'm just answering your question. And that's what you get for trying to ask me a sidebar slick mouth question. You know what I'm saying? Maybe you don't. Either either you felt what I'm describing, you've been in my shoes, or you do it, whichever one, I don't care. But it's not cute. Like the reason a lot of people who quote unquote don't get jokes or who take life seriously or who are 
You know, like autistic people, a lot of times are, they don't quite catch sarcasm, sarcasm, not all of them, but some of us, and it's not all the time. But if people would just say what they mean and mean what they say, there wouldn't have to be any confusion. A lot of times people think that I'm confusing because they can't wrap their mind around, no, I said exactly what I meant. (laughs) Like, you don't have to read into it. I meant what I said, and I said what I meant, period. Like, If I had meant something different, I would have said something different. And so telling me that I should have said something different is futile, futile, but also trying to read something into what I said is futile. It's pointless. And I probably didn't mean that because I said what I meant. (laughs) Um, So if you're not saying what you mean and I respond to what you said, then you're going to be all confused or flustered or mad or in your feelings or whatever. And that's not my fault. Because that's passive aggressive in the first place that you even came at me like that. So if it's, you know, accidental and, you know, like sometimes people will say stuff and it's just habit out of like systemic, you know, trauma and bias and all those sorts of things. But again, still, I address it. And sometimes people will go, oh, I never thought of that, you know. Um, But sometimes, you know, (laughs) people, like I said, get attitude. Either way, not my problem. So there's that. Um, Do you, do all of you, do you 100%. And if there's something about you that you don't feel like you should do you, those are the things that we work on and change. We don't cover them up and hide them. So, um, yeah. (laughs) I know, y'all, that was a long way to say that. But sometimes, you know, sometimes... um, I see stuff repeatedly before I sort of um, share it publicly and it, without throwing anybody under the bus or making you feel like I'm leaving you out or stepping on your toes. Either way, it's for everybody. You know, we can all look at these things and relate them to various scenarios and examples in our lives. And if not, it just hasn't happened yet. So um, that's why I try to make it generic so that everybody can relate um, and, and apply it for their various situations. You know, when people tell you to be niche and define your lane and figure out your, you know, your lane has to do with what it is you do and what it is you're good at. And again, you might be good at multiple things, and that's cool too. Don't let nobody talk you off of that. But your lane does not, I don't care what they say, does not only have to do with what group of people you're talking to. That's why we're screwed up in this world. Why does your audience only have to be white, male, 30 plus, whatever, or black, female? No, good word is good word and good word should be good word for everybody. Hello. Life lessons are life lessons. Why do my why does my audience only have to be? I mean, OK, if you're if you're speaking from a level of expertise then maybe beginner expertise might be more specific for a certain group of people and, and, um, you know, advanced level might be for a different group, but it's still not based on what they look like. It's still not based on how old they are or where they're from or how much money they have. Hello. So I submit that all of that is playing right into the hands of the systemic bias and inequality and equity that we have been experiencing in this world. My audience is whoever likes uh, this living sugar-free, good word, real talk, improving communities, businesses, and lifestyles one solution at a time. You might be a CEO or you might be a stay-at-home mom. It doesn't, I don't have to do that. And I'm not going to let nobody tell me that I have to. And you shouldn't either. I mean, like, I'm only going to, like, oh, only certain people can pick up my book and read it. No. Veterans, female veterans, black women, black female veterans, autistic people, um, et cetera, are across all walks of life. And I've walked across various walks of life. So, yeah, that's a huge hindrance for small business owners, solopreneurs, um, uh, personal brand people when they first get out the gate. You get real confused by people trying to tell you what it is you should and shouldn't be doing. And if they could tell you how to do what it is you're about to do, they would be doing it instead of you. Right. And maybe they're in the industry that you're in, but they're still not doing exactly what you're doing. Right. Because if they are, then you need to find some find something. The biggest the biggest thing you need to do is figure out what you're bringing to the table that's different. And if you figure out what you're bringing to whatever industry or trade or specialty that you're passionate about, that's different. Then you don't really need an expert to tell you how to do it. 
You know, you can read up on marketing, you can read up on how to do all this stuff and you can, you know, a lot of us share how to do it for free. You know, the social media, there's ways that you can get business cards and websites and all sorts of things you can get for free. So, you know, paying someone to tell you how to do the thing that you're doing that's unique, that only you can do. I don't know. Is it necessarily a a wise expense, right? Now, after you've done it for a while and you've perfected it, you've figured out what you're doing and, and you're growing and you've got employees and all that kind of stuff, and then you pay consultants and all those sorts of things, that's a whole nother level from what I'm talking about, right? But if you just need somebody to just tell you to get going and get started living your purpose and your vision, you don't need an expert to tell you how to do that. And all they're really going to do is talk you off of it and, and talk you into paying a whole bunch of money. Um, before you can get started because somehow they have to show you how to do it and I don't care what your industry is there's a certain level of motivation that comes along with it you have to motivate people you have to motivate your customers you have to motivate your employees right so if you can't motivate your own self to just start then maybe you should rethink what it is that you're thinking about doing you know Because ultimately, we don't do it until we get sick and tired of being sick and tired. And like, I I can't tell you how many times somebody has messaged me and told me that they wanted me to help them to get their whatever thing going. And usually people say that because they see what you're doing and they feel guilty and they think, oh, I need to do that too. And so they message you or they tell you that. They say, oh, I need your help with doing that. But they say that, but they're really not ready yet, right? Right. What they're really doing is experiencing some type of jealousy, haterade type of thing because you're making them feel guilty that they're not doing their thing because they see you doing your thing, right? So then if you do that, you go and help that person. After you start, quote unquote, trying to consult them, they don't really receive the consulting. Why? Because they're not your consulting client. If they wanted somebody to be their consultant, they would have hired a consultant. They wouldn't have came and messaged you and said, hey, can you help me, right? So then you go help them, and they're giving you 50 million reasons why they can't do what it is you're telling them to do. Now, a potential fan has now turned into a hater because now they're mad at you because now you made them feel even guiltier because you called them out, basically, and you told them how easy it was, and they're not going to do it because they're not ready yet. But now they're mad at you, really, for pointing it out to them. So, yeah. Just be mindful of that. Be mindful as you're starting off of thinking that, you know, you need an assistant and taking on VAs and assistants and all this kind of stuff. And in reality, they just really want to get inside your brand and take over um, (laughs) or overshadow you or whatever. Um, There's a lot of that out there, you guys. There's a lot of quote-unquote virtual assistants and administrative assistants and etc. And what they really want is to just be the star in somebody else's show. Okay? I'm not saying VAs are bad and virtual assistants are bad. I'm not saying any of those people are bad. They are amazing humans when they're good at it and when they care. But it takes a servant heart to be an administrative assistant. Quote-unquote assistant. A lot of people have a problem with the very term. Like if you even suggest that they should be your assistant, they will get an attitude with you. That's not the person that should be your assistant. You shouldn't make that person's title bigger because they got an attitude because you said the word assistant because they got humility issues. And it's your thing. It's your baby. It's your vision. It's your show. And they want to come be a part of it, but they have a problem with you calling them your assistant. They're not qualified. They're not qualified for the position because they want some kind of fame and glory. Okay. Oh, that was a sidebar, y'all, but clearly it's relevant. Um, I can't even tell you stories about that one. Um, So, yeah, well, anyway, we're talking about leveling up. And um, the theme is around the DIY head extraction. When we go to a break and come back, I'm going to read that off to you if you haven't read it. Um, But if um, for those who haven't read it, but I, I urge you to go just you can hashtag DIY head extraction and type it in Google or you can go on. Um, sugarfreecoaching.com, Living Sugar Free, uh, Real Talk, I think it says, for my blogs. And um, you can read it there. I suggest you save it 
save it to your phone somewhere. I promise you, if you're in a funk, if you're having a bad day, um, if you just like being in a funk and crying and complaining, I'm not talking to you. But for those of y'all who, you know, sometimes life gets us, people do stuff to us. Somebody stabs you in your back or snatches the rug out from under you and you were doing everything right, trying to help others, you know, being genuine, going above and beyond, doing extra and that happens to you, and then the funk gets on you, and you don't like it because you don't like being in a funk. You don't like complaining. You don't like doing negative stuff, right? This will really help you. It will help you shake that off, and it will remind you of why you're doing what it is you do, why you are who you are, and how kind of not to let not to let the haters and the negativity and saboteurs get to you. That's what it's about. You know, some people have read it and got an attitude immediately. I'm not talking to them. That's not, this is not for people who don't want to get a DIY head extraction, period. If you like being in a funk, if you like complaining, if you like having an attitude all the time, you're not my audience and this is not for you. But for those of y'all, my superhero crew, um, I can't wait for Daniel Chapman to come on. We're going to talk about that. Um, a lot of y'all are like, I'm nobody's superhero, right? I, that's it. Th- th- therein lies the that. If this is you and you feel that way, then you are. And you like doing for others. You like doing the right thing and being a good person. But sometimes it gets to be too much and it gets to be hard. And you feel very um, beat up, kicked, um, let down, et cetera. We are human. It gets to us. This is where the DIY head extraction will help you. You know, sometimes you might be teaching kids, you might be um, dealing with employees, you might be working in the church. There's like so many different, you know, volunteering. There's like so many different scenarios where a leader can face um, hardship, chaos, trauma, um, trying to do the right thing. And that's who this is for. So um, just know (laughs) everything ain't for everybody. And if you don't get it, I'm not talking to you. And no offense. I mean, I'm not saying you can't listen. Just don't be listening and have an attitude the whole time or be trying to tell me I don't know what I'm talking about. Because, again, if you don't get it, I'm not talking to you. Trust me when I say living sugar-free sweethearts get it. And um, so this will help you. So if you haven't read it yet, if you haven't read it recently, read it again. Um, save it. Put it somewhere where it pops up every now and then so it'll remind you in case you forget about it, right? Because when the funk comes on you, you're not thinking, oh, let me go get a DIY head extraction. You're thinking, I don't deserve what just happened to me. And so put it somewhere where it pops up every now and then or somewhere where it's visible, where it can be a reminder to do it ever so often. Because I have a lot of people that, you know, I talk to, connect with, engage with, care about, and sometimes y'all need DIY head extraction. Sometimes the effort that it takes to shake your funk off of you is more than what you should make me have to do. And if you're not, if you're not there yet, then we shouldn't be engaging. So that means you jumped up and jumped into an area and said you were ready for something that you really weren't ready yet. Because if you don't, if you're not willing or voluntarily getting your own DIY head extraction, you're not who I'm talking to. And you shouldn't be wasting my time trying to help you shake your funk off. Sometimes you do need help, right? But I shouldn't be dragging you. It shouldn't be like pulling teeth. I shouldn't be exhausted afterwards because you already got your DIY head extraction willingly, voluntarily, and you just need a little extra help, right? But if I have to drag you, that means you're, you need to get back on the porch. That means you trying to be in the kitchen with the heat and you don't have no business being in the kitchen. And I submit that if you are miserable and if it's too much for you and if everything's too heavy and you feel all of the stress and the strain of what I'm talking about, but yet you're not ready to take these actions, it's because you're doing too much. You're taking on too much. You're saying that you're ready for things that you're really not ready for. And sometimes people do that just out of a need for attention. But I submit that you should be careful about what kind of attention you ask for. Because if you jump up and claim to be a warrior and claim to be a change agent and you're going to be on the front lines, you're going to get your behind kicked like you are on the front lines. And if you're not ready for that, you need to fall back to the rear. Because you are going to get other people killed, traumatized, damaged, hindered, harm them from being able to do what it is they're supposed to do. I have a huge audience. So think about it. If you're a warrior and I have a huge audience and I'm helping you, why would you want to hinder me from being able to help others? Like true warriors are like, no, no, I got it. Don't worry about me. 
And that's not always a good thing. Sometimes we need help. But what I'm saying is you shouldn't be doing this. No, wait, stay over here with me. I need your help. Oh, I need all your attention. Oh, my problems, my problems. If you're doing that to a warrior leader, you need to fall to the rear. Because in the rear, you can lay up and cry and get all the attention you want and you're not hindering anything. But you can't jump in the midst of the battle just for, to get attention and then be sabotaging and hindering all the warriors. Because if you do that, you're the enemy. You're a wolf in sheep's clothing. And you will be found out. And you will be kicked to the rear or kicked out. Or just get your feelings hurt so bad that you don't want to be there before you, anymore that you just crumble and fall apart or whatever. It's dangerous. It's dangerous playing games that you're not ready for. It's dangerous jumping in battles that you're not trained for. It's dangerous playing with fire and poking bears, okay? A lot of people do that. Oh, we're birds of a feather. You know, we, oh, we must have been separated at birth. Oh, we're so much alike. And some people say that, and I'd be like, yeah, I feel that way too. No, a, a couple of people have said that, and I feel like that too. But for the most part, when people say that, I don't feel like that. I'm like, no, because I don't cry like you do. I don't complain. I don't. If I should get to bend your ear for an hour or two because we spend time on the phone, the hour is not going to be spent me crying about my problems. And if that's what you're doing, we are not birds of a feather. Because my birds of a feather try to leave other people better than they found them. My birds of a feather, when they get time to spend talking to people, engaging with people, they talk about higher things and greater things and where we're going and what we're going to do for others, not all about what somebody did to us and how we're going to cry about it. Ain't nobody got time for that. And that goes for everybody. It doesn't matter who. You get to talk to your pastor on the phone. You get to talk to your, you know, professor. You talk to your grandparents, you know, whoever, your spouse. Like you can share like what happened in your day or if something bad happened without exhausting the whole conversation with all your problems or sucking the life out of somebody every time you talk to them, even if you got problems. Everybody got problems. So can you take turns? Can maybe this time it be about all your problems and next time you let the other person have the floor? Or can you catch yourself at some point in the conversation and be like, oh, enough about my problems. Well, how are you doing? You know, or or when the person says, well, you know what, though, everything happens for a reason. Can you say, you know what, you're right instead of, oh, but you just don't understand what I went through. And if you are not willing to do all of this, then you're not. I'm not talking to you. You're not ready yet. Because we're leveling up. And when we level up, we're not dragging nobody. So if you have to be dragged, fall to the rear. Okay, because we're not going to stay around here and wait for you. And when there's not anybody around to hold your hand and show you how to do it anymore, you don't get to cry about it and say nobody cares about you because you let, you know, you let the whole garrison leave without you because you weren't ready because you wanted to still cry for a little while. Okay. So I know that was hard. I love y'all. Um, I'm going to be back after a break, and we're going to talk specifically about what exactly the DIY head extraction is, what it says, and how you can apply it. Be back after a break. Hey, what's up? I'm Daniel Chapman, a.k.a. 1202 Deuce Lee, and you are listening to the Living Sugar Free Lifestyle Show with Andrea in the morning. Welcome back. Hey, y'all. You still with me? Y'all didn't like cut out after that little last part. I'm th- I just I'm thankful for the y'all for those of y'all who stick with me. I appreciate you. I know it's tough. I know it's tight, but it's right. But you know, some of us like having aha moments. Some of us like growing and learning new stuff and, you know, getting to know ourselves more and checking ourselves, doing self-checks. Some of us like that, you know, but some other people, they don't like it. But you know what? If you like working out, but you don't like the pain of it, I suggest you start enjoying the pain. It's similar, you know what I mean? It's like, 
That's why in the military they used to tell people, or I don't know, they probably still do tell people pain is just weakness leaving the body. Like when you work out, there's a soreness that comes after that. Like that soreness, like for most people who enjoy working out, that's like a badge of honor, like a yummy kind of feeling, right? It's kind of like eating until you're miserable. Like nobody complains about eating until they're miserable. I mean, you complain jokingly, but it's the same kind of thing. Like you work out until you're miserable. Same thing. You self-check until you're miserable. You know, if it hurts, that means you're doing something good. That means you're, yeah, not, I mean, you know, I'm not talking about just self-deprecating and putting yourself down. That kind of hurt. For some reason, that don't hurt people, though. It makes them feel good. It hurts. It just is not immediate. It don't hurt until somebody else say one little thing and then you feel like you've been getting put down. But really, you've been putting your own self down. But checking yourself and weighing if you could have did the best thing in each situation or if you're looking at situations the right way or if you can get a different outlook, that's a good kind of pain that people should embrace more. Um, I suggest that if, you, that, you, that if you don't embrace that and you learn how to embrace it, you'll be less likely to pop off just because somebody gives you some feedback or criticism or advice or whatever, or steps on your toes. You know, even if somebody steps on our toes and they're being negative, it doesn't have to be something that we just flip out for. We can still learn something even in that. So we're going to talk about the DIY head extraction. I'm going to read through it briefly because you can go and read for yourself. It's everywhere, and it's really something you're supposed to do on your own, okay? Um, So the instructions start off with to properly, safely, and permanently extract your head from your derriere. Follow these steps carefully and repeat as needed until condition subsides. Permanently does not mean that you don't need to do it again later on because it could happen again, okay? Um, maybe you tripped and fell and got your head stuck in your butt. I don't know. But acknowledge, number one is acknowledge the world does not, never has, and never will revolve around you and yours. Number two, acknowledge you and yours are not the only ones with problems, feelings, desires, tragedies, working hard, or the perception you have been treated unfairly. Number three, acknowledge your perceived problems are not larger than everyone or anyone else's. Number four, acknowledge the grass is not greener on the other side of anything ever unless you failed to water yours. Acknowledge when your head is in your derriere, you cannot cannot see clearly, think logically, or operate effectively. Number six, acknowledge when your head is in your derriere, you will make your problem someone else's fault, doing and responsibility to fix, thereby giving up your ability and shirking your responsibility to solve your own issues. Number seven, acknowledge when you don't deal with issues today, they become problems for you and yours tomorrow. Number eight, if you feel anger, bitterness, or hatred after reading this honest, unbiased, and helpful information, refer to number six. Okay, and then it says visit sugarfreecoaching.com for one-on-one support. Now, that's going to change a little bit. Um, why? Because, do-do-do, big announcement, there's an ebook uh, coming soon, a workbook, that you can actually get this in writing. Um, you can follow along with classes and um, make notes in it and etc. Um, I think it's probably going to be free to the participants of the uh, workshop that we're going to be doing, but more announcements coming with that soon. Um, but it's going to change a little bit um, because I noticed since the time of wrote, writing this, which was years ago, that um, I could just refine it a little bit. So. The new one will be um, slightly different than what you see posted around the internet. Um, So you're going to want to get your hands on that. You're going to want to participate in that program, especially if you get it, because it's something you can do ongoing. Um, But also, too, if you really don't get how to apply it yet, you're going to want to participate in that workshop. So it's going to be beneficial to all. Um, Yeah, but that's the gist of it. And if you get it, you see why it's something that everyone needs and why it's something that you need often frequently because stuff happens right um the class and the workshop is not really going to be about giving you a DIY head extraction it's going to be more about how you can um work through your own DIY head extraction how you get your own aha moments and self-discovery and etc so this is just a tool that we're going to use um And you can apply it in various situations. So there will be more about that coming in the near future. uh, More announcements on that class and how you can participate. But yeah, so that's the gist of what the DIY head extraction is. If you've been hearing about it, you've never seen it, definitely go Google it. Find it, save it somewhere, and use it often, okay? Okay, so yeah. 
not going to go too into detail on that because like I said, we'll be doing a class and there'll be a workbook, but that's what it says. If you have questions about any of that, um, definitely shoot a note, ask me, um, and I'll incorporate it into the show, into the series. Um, We're going to have a bunch of different guests speaking from their various perspectives, giving you examples of how this can apply. Um, But yeah, man, y'all, I've just been seeing some things and it applies to everybody on every side, no matter what position you're in. We can all get a different perspective and get a self check on how we're looking at things and how to better, um, handle certain situations, how to be the change a little bit more, even in conflict, how to um, be an influencer, you know, um, I'm just seeing a lot, y'all, and um, we're hoping for change, but change doesn't just fall out of the sky, somebody has to be the example, somebody has to be willing to teach, somebody has to be willing to show, you can demand that people change all day long. But if you don't show them how, and you can call the person the biggest idiot on the planet and say all about how they should know. Even if someone is blind to a very obvious fact, even if they are totally ignorant to something that is totally obvious, and you show them that they're wrong, it doesn't mean that they're going to know how to do, to behave, to act differently after receiving that knowledge that they were wrong. So if nobody's willing to show and teach, how's anybody going to learn the right way to do things? And who's in the position of authority to show and teach? That's the question. If you're spending all your time being angry, you have no business teaching anybody anything. We already talked about being on the front lines earlier, but for those of you who claim to be teaching something, You must have some compassion and empathy to go along with that teaching. Okay? So, yeah. It's a lot of reasons to be angry right now. You have every right to be angry right now. But at some point, we have to get over our anger so that we can function. Yeah? Anger is not a feeling that's supposed to last. Even if somebody did something really, really bad to you right now. We're not talking about nothing ongoing. We're not talking about somebody something somebody did a while ago. We're not talking about something. We're talking about somebody something somebody did right now. Even if they did it right now and they did it to you, you still can't just carry that anger forever. For your own benefit. Okay? So yeah. Stuff happens. We still in the middle of it. It's still going on. But I'm here to talk to you about what you're going to do with it. What are we going to do about it? How are we going to work through it? What's it going to look like on the other side? Because it's real easy to just get caught up in the battle and the anger and the fight. Sometimes, too, it's real easy to get so comfortable fighting that then when the other side is ready to stop fighting, they can't even stop fighting because you won't even let them surrender. So, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Woo-wee. Okay, so if you're following me everywhere, you would already know, um, as I talked earlier, we're going to be doing the live streaming and uh, we'll be sharing the clips via podcast as well as um, on video on various platforms. But uh, here today, when we come back from the break, I'm going to share um, from Vita Brooks and Lily Aurora who had some very interesting thoughts to share about the process of DIY head extraction examples, personal examples where, you know, they have had to get a DIY head extraction and really how it can have an impact on our society, um, organizations, cultures, groups, families, etc. Um, and they had, <laughs> they had some wisdom to share y'all. So I'm very excited to share that with you. And um, we'll be sharing more. Uh, We'll be sharing more. You'll get to hear um, various clips from that interview as well as uh, from that panel discussion as well as um, a lot of other guests that we'll be having on sharing their wisdom and experience 
realization about um, some of the different points that are in this DIY head extraction outline. So um, you don't just have to hear it from me. So um, we'll be right back after a break. And um, if you haven't already looked at it, go look at it. I know I just read it to you guys, but de definitely go pull that up and read it so that as they start talking, you can have that reference point. Okay, we'll be back after a break. My name is Vita Brooks, and um, I am a veteran, and I, I am the co-founder of a nonprofit organization called V Square National Fostering Youth, and we have a mission to take children that are in foster care ages 13 to 23 and help them with the transition of aging out of foster care. So um, that's my passion finding housing, education resources, mentors, and support for um, those young kids who don't have family to lean on. We are creating a community that will be available for some, some questions. questions. I'm, I'm also, also a mom, mom and, and a grandma, and I have foster children. So um, quite honestly, just loving life, and um, that's me. As friends growing up, her mom was just one of those who was just always blamed her for having her, you know. And that that stuck out to me so much. Where it was like, I this this person doesn't choose to be born, you know, and and not choosing who you're born to. Like, where does that? Where do you get that? Where do you get that idea from? Right. Um, and I've just always tried to remember that he's going to be an adult a lot longer than he's going to be a little boy. Mm -hmm. And we're getting to that age now where he's starting to learn. And, and again, this, this whole quarantine thing has been, at least for me, and I feel almost bad saying this because I know it's been horrible and, and very devastating for many, many, many people. But, but for me, it has been a full blessing in so many ways to just have this time. And now in the fall, I'm going to be homeschooling. You know, like, I'm going to be able to have that time with my son to teach them all those things that I know they don't teach in school <laughs> first right. of all my whole family on my sister's side is teachers and she's like don't do it <laughs> you, you know keep, keep them home, home. Um, and and uh, it's going to be really amazing I'm looking forward to it to see what you comes because I'm a little honestly um, I'm, I'm a little, little jealous of moms that right now who are able to work from home and be there because I love to have that opportunity to be sitting there with my kid all day you know what I mean yeah. um, but yeah. again I, I'm cheering everybody my because you know I, I got grandbabies now my kids are all adults but, but every family on because there's some of that to be done but kudos to those 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 couples those moms those dads who are making the sacrifice so they can take care of their I, I think we are finding that there's a hero inside of us mm -hmm. as this COVID because everybody was like, oh, all right, cool. A couple of days off of work. Then it was, guess I can't. <laughs> then it was, am I going to live through this? But now I think it's kind of coming around to, wait, you know what I learned while I was here? I'm in that cubicle I've been sitting in. <laughs> and so I think this is great. And then you get to learn, you get spend, you spent fourth time with teenagers, teenagers. Right? <laughs> right? And now you're looking at them like, I didn't teach you how to boil an egg. How did I miss that? <laughs> so, so, so I think COVID was a blessing to so many families. It brought mm -hmm. them together and you're learning to communicate. And you know what, this is, I'm, I'm finding this time really, really good. I said when I was like, Woohoo! Gonna go. I'm gonna get locked down on COVID. I'm walking every day. Did not happen. I'm just put out there. <laughs> um, but I didn't lay in bed all day either. But I did get out and exercise, and I've actually lost a couple of pounds. Oh, nice! I'm really excited. But there's this thing where you have to say, "What do I really want?" Set those goals. So I think that's the best example we can be for our kids. 
Ooh-wee. I told y'all they had a lot of wisdom to share. Um, so yeah, I'm doing a lot of things technically that are advanced beyond my current or previous level of knowledge. So I decided to go ahead and share it, you know, publicly, A, because I like to share my process and allow others to try to learn from my experiences and my lessons and whether it be technical gadgets or uh, software, whatever things that I use, I always try to share. Um, So, you know, the whole affiliate thing is not just about getting paid. It's about, you know, adding value, first of all, to yourself as a product, but also to, you know, getting paid for promoting the things and, and that you use, that you're using and that you're talking about anyway. So I talk about that a lot. You can go listen to previous episodes about the hows and the whys of doing that. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, <laughs> the point is, is that I've been doing this live streaming setup with all these different encoders and software and all that good stuff. If you want to hear the details on that, you can catch some of the lives and laugh at me like when my microphone doesn't work and sound and et cetera, echoes and all that. But I'm getting the bugs out and I'm learning how to do it and making it pretty. And so we've had a couple of lives. Um, and you can't really practice it until you have someone on the other end. So, um, this was the very first one, and of course, we had major uh, audio difficulties. So, um, I am sharing the clips that I have that are good um, over this Level Up series. And um, you heard a really awesome introduction from Vita Brooks, but you didn't necessarily hear Lily's intro. And you can. Um, find Lily. First of all, you can follow her on social media. And of course, you can see this in the caption introduction. You can follow her at her social media tags. It's Lily, L-I-L-Y, Aurora, A-U-R-O-R-A. You can find her on Twitter. You can find her on um, Instagram. Uh, You can find her on TikTok. And you can also visit her website, lilyaurora.com. And she is a um, business advisor. So she's going to do your Um, business management consulting, as well as doing some um, helpful setup types of things, um, some publishing types of things and all that sort of stuff. You can visit her website to find out more. And she is also, too, uh, the business manager for the Mighty Pen podcast and website. You can check out their comic books and whatnot. They're really awesome. And you can hear me over there on that podcast as well, Joe Vallon. Uh, And we did an interview with Joe and Lily previously um, as part of our, um, golly, it was when quarantine first kicked off. I don't remember what the name of the series was. I'll tell y'all in just a second. But um, you can go back and listen to the previous. If you don't already know and you haven't already heard it, you can go back to listen to listen to previous episodes. And um, so this is our first time having Vita on and having Vita and Lily on together was really, really, really awesome. Oh, speaking of awesome, it was called Random Awesomeness. So you can go listen to the Random Awesomeness with Joe Vallon and Lily popped in on that episode briefly. So definitely go check that out. And um, I hope you enjoyed it. And we'll be bringing you more clips from our live streaming event the other night. Um, (laughs) um, And you can join us for the next one this Thursday evening at uh, 7 p.m. We're going to be doing it on a weekly basis. It might just be me. It may be me and a guest or it may be me and a whole panel. I'll let you know ahead of time. And um, I hope you guys have a great week. And I look forward to talking to you again soon and seeing you around the net. Follow me everywhere at Sugar Free Coach. Talk soon. Bye-bye. Thanks for tuning in to Andrea in the Morning. This is Andrea Raquel, the social entrepreneur and Sugar Free Coach. Thank you for joining me. Thanks for listening. Thanks for tuning in and following. I hope you've liked our page on Facebook. That's facebook.com forward slash Sugar Free Coach, as well as on Twitter. You can catch me on Twitter at Sugar Free Coach. I will follow back and reciprocate. I always do.